Well, hello guys, welcome back to another guide video. I am Lonely Wolf, and in today's video, we're going to be discussing feats. And uh, in case you guys weren't aware already, feats are a mechanic in the long dark that alters specific systems in different ways to benefit you, the player. However, you are limited in how many feats you can apply to a save depending on the difficulty or experience mode that you choose. Not only that, feats can't be applied retroactively, so if you're already in the middle of a save and you unlock a new feat, you can't apply it, unfortunately. It will be there for all future runs, however, and you can select it whenever you create a new run. Feats can be very beneficial to the player, but considering that the higher up the experience mode ladder you climb, the less you can have, it's important to understand the benefits and how they work, and make an informed decision as to the best feats to pick to set your run up for long term success. For reference, Pilgrim allows you 5 feats, Voyager 4, Stalker 3, and Interloper 2. Now that we've finished discussing what feats are, let's dive into the feats themselves and discuss each one. The first on our list is Book Smarts. This feat is awarded after you have completed 250 hours of research books and increases the amount of skill point gained from each book by 10%. In my opinion, this feat is a nice boost if you're struggling to find another feat to fill out a slot for a run or is the only one you can apply, but there's far better ones to take up a spot. Research books can be helpful in giving you a leg up, but overall, the 10% boost to skill point gain is incredibly small and is easily offset by actually completing a skill test to increase your points normally. For example, if a book gives you 10 skill points, now it will give you 11 if you have this feat active. I'd suggest this feat for Pilgrim and Voyager, but once you get up to Stalker and Interloper with 3 and 2 slots respectively, Taking up one of those valuable spaces with this feat is probably a waste, as its actual use and benefit is incredibly limited in scope. Instead of actually benefiting a specific skill, it's just in general to research, and the benefit gained from having this feat active is so small. Next up is Cold Fusion. This feat has the community divided in its worth and benefits, so I'll go over it and I'll explain why I think it's invaluable in the right instances but you're free to make up your own mind on the subject. Cold Fusion is awarded after spending 100 days outside and adds a permanent plus 2 Celsius or about 4-ish Fahrenheit on the uh, to your feels like temperature. Wow, I should have should have stipulated that. Uh, and that's a permanent boost, it doesn't ever go away. On the face of it, this seems like a very small boost as to be pretty worthless, and in the lesser experience modes where you being cold is pretty rare once you're kitted out, uh, it probably is pretty worthless. However, it makes Stalker and Interloper so much more passable in the early game. Due to the fact that starting gear in these experience modes can be so bad and that the interiors of buildings can be so cold, it's often hard to find a lesser shelter that's not something big like the camp office in Mystery Lake or the Quonset Garage in Coastal Highway. Uh, it's hard to find an outside shelter like a little trailer or, or something that's warm enough to stay in for any period of time. However, if you decide to snag this little guy, it can make those shelters warm enough so that you're no longer freezing. This boost is super helpful in Interloper's early game, and can almost double the rate at which you can explore by reducing the rate at which you freeze and increasing the amount of viable shelters. Later on, its use wanes, but in Interloper, I'd still contend that it's a pretty handy feat, and can come in, uh, come in handy for uh, helping you offset those super cold days. Next up is Efficient Machine. This feat is awarded after surviving for 500 days and rewards the player with a 10% reduction in consumed calories. This means the player can stay full for longer. Overall, this feat is nice if you like to stretch your food supplies further and don't want to carry as much with you on journeys, but I personally find the feat pretty useless, as finding food and staying nourished has never really been a major hurdle for me. However, if you personally struggle with this and find staying full uh, and keeping up on your calories is pretty hard, the feat may actually help you out a little bit. Overall, I'd place it as a decent feat to apply if you've got nothing else going on for you at the moment, or struggle with food. But otherwise, I find it pretty useless. Next up on the list is Fire Master. This is the feat to rule them all. How many times do you need a fire in the long dart? That's a silly question. You always need a fire. 
fire to cook, fire to warm up, fire for water, fire to buy some time, fire to flex on your new friends. I mean, the list goes on. This feat grants your runs character an immediate level three to fire starting skill, meaning tinder is no longer necessary at all. Of course, you also get the standard boost to fire starting chance too. Pretty much all players everywhere agree this is a super OP feat that makes staying fed and warm in the early to mid game a breeze and reduces wasted matches and other fire materials. Overall, I'd say this is a feat to strive for and can be extremely beneficial. Please burn responsibly. Next on the list is Free Runner. This feat is activated after you've sprinted for about 50 kilometers in the game. With it activated, sprinting consumes 25% fewer calories. For those of you out there who like to go, who uh, gotta go fast, this is the feat to get you, that you need to get to reduce your need to eat. Overall, I personally find this feat rather boring, as I don't sprint too much, unless I'm trying to lower my fatigue meter or get out of the blizzard, and the reduction in calories isn't a necessity for me. But, depending on your playstyle, it could definitely be a great pick if you need it, and if you find yourself doing a lot of sprinting. Next up is Snowwalker. Just like Free Runner, this one impacts your sprinting. However, Instead of reducing calories consumed while you sprint, this one recharges your stamina meter 25% or sorry, 20% faster. It's activated after you walk a thousand kilometers in the game or sprint. Just traveled. Fallen? Hmm, I'm not sure if falling counts, but anyway, after you've moved your little player around a thousand kilometers, you'll get this feat. Overall, I think this feat is kind of worthless because stamina recharge rate isn't super important and this feat will really only come in handy when you're in those edge cases, like with close encounters, where recharging that stamina bar ASAP is important. But again, it's up to you and your personal playstyle. If you do lots of sprinting and such, this feat could be a big boon. Next up is Blizzard Walker. This feat is activated after you spend 20 days outdoors during blizzards. Yes, this is the one for the masochists out there. You find yourself waddling everywhere, overloaded because you can't bear to leave the smallest item behind, and find yourself cursing at the wind for slowing you down or you slowing you down even further. I hope it could help me slow down my speaking. This is the feat for you. All new and ready to go, this feat reduces the slowdown caused by wind by 25%, allowing you to cart your haul much faster. I'd give this feat a good whirl if you've acquired it and have the space for it, because I often find myself waddling into the wind, cursing it for slowing me down. A 25% speed boost is pretty nice, and, and overall and objectively I'd say it could be passed up for some other ones, but that's going to depend on your playstyle and what experience mode you're playing at to determine if it's the best pick for you or not. Alrighty, next up is Expert Trapper. Seriously, get this feat. No, really, get this feat. This feat comes in right beneath Firewalker Man. If you've ever used a snare line in the long dark, you know how good it can be at providing a supplemental source of food to bolster your normal hunting and fishing needs. However, what if I told you it was possible to live only off of rabbits? Say no more! Hi, Billy Mays here, and if you want something that will really blow your socks off, this is it. But wait, there's more. For the low, low price of only snaring 100 rabbits, you get a 100% bonus to the efficacy of your snares. This means that you'll be catching rabbits twice as fast, and if that's not enough to convince you, nothing is! All jokes aside though, this feat can be pretty powerful when used properly, assuming you have the slot available to apply it. It makes keeping a stock of reserve food much easier and much more manageable, and it can even make rabbits your only food source. And that's pretty powerful, especially in the higher up difficulties where sometimes getting food can be well, a bit of a chore and a very dangerous endeavor. So seriously, Expert Trapper. It honestly might even go on par with Firewalker Man. Like, this is a good feat to get. And last but not least, the last feat to grace our charts for now, until they invariably update the game and I need to make a follow-up video because that's the way this world works, is the Straight to the Heart feat. This feat is granted to the player after consuming 250 units of coffee, energy drinks, or emergency stims. This feat makes the benefits of consuming those items last 25% longer, making this a worthwhile feat to pursue and acquire. Depending on your playstyle, it's probably one of the better feats out there, and I would certainly take it if you've got the space for it. Alright, that concludes this video on the introduction to feats. Following up, I will have a series of videos discussing which feats you should pick depending on your playstyle and experience mode, and the pros and cons pertaining to those decisions. The little ranking tier here is my own based on my own subjective view on the feats, so take that as you wish and pursue feats that you feel will best complement your playstyle. 
Consider subscribing to catch those experience mode specific feet discussion videos. And that's a mouthful. Say that 20 times fast. That will be coming out next. Uh, and by next, I mean sometime soon, hopefully. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and that it helped you clarify some of the benefits and usefulness of the feet. I've been Lonely Wolf. See you around. And as always, stay safe and stay warm out there.